Who gets this mad over an anti-child trafficking movie? Hans, are we the baddies? All the usual suspects. Sound of Freedom has grossed over $85 million at the box office, despite costing only $14 million to make. Saving kids from the dark world of child trafficking. But feelings are running so high. There are now claims the film's being sabotaged at movie theatres in a viral compilation seen by 8 million people. Matt Wallace highlights supposedly strange events that have been occurring at screenings. Fire alarms being mysteriously set off during the film. Excuse me. May I have your attention, please? A fire has been reported in the building. This is what happens when Red and I decide to go to the movies. The air conditioning suddenly failing. Just to let you guys know again, it is gonna get hot. So why is it only this one though, not not all the other ones? Weird smells. This horrible smell. It smelled almost like an electrical fire. Leaving the lights on to ruin the movie. They literally had the lights on. They kept the lights on the entire movie. <laughs> Who does that? They turned all the lights on during Sound of Freedom. Yes. The lights didn't turn off for the first 10 minutes. What's actually happening? You are free passes. Hopefully without interruption. I unfortunately and apologize for the inconvenience, but we're getting it hopefully looked at later in the week. Can I trust you? Sorry guys. Really? This is called intentional. They yeah. don't want it to go to the box office gross. The bathroom suddenly encountering problems. Getting refunds for the sound of freedom because apparently the water pressure and the bathrooms aren't working here. So no one can watch. The movie being deleted and people being told to leave. Tried going to see Sound of Freedom, and this happened. No one left until they played the movie. They tried to give us free tickets if we left. Along with other odd interruptions and cancellations. And about an hour and 20 minutes into the movie, we get a random emergency evacuation. When people come out and complain, it's not our fault. We have to get this situated so that everybody can feel accommodated and then we'll restart the movie, okay? Restart, restart the movie? What? Oh. With many of these clips having gone viral on TikTok and Twitter, along with the whole narrative that the movie is being sabotaged, Angel Studios, the company behind Sound of Freedom, was forced to respond. They pointed out that many of the complaints originated out of screenings that were hosted by AMC Theatres, and that AMC has in fact been an outstanding partner for Angel Studios, agreeing to add additional screenings for Sound of Freedom over and above their initial commitment. Then the CEO of AMC tweeted that the movie had been screened 3,000 times at 5 170 theatres in a single day, calling the conspiracy theories bizarre misinformation. I mean, it's pretty clear that AMC has thrown its full support behind Sound of Freedom and isn't sabotaging the movie. But given how numerous shit lib news outlets trashed the movie from the very beginning, denigrating it as some QAnon inspired conspiracy guff, despite the fact that it's based on a true story, is it really beyond the realms of possibility to suggest that some deranged woke cinema staff at some local theatres? Influenced by leftist media hysteria, have been personally trying to sabotage some of the screenings. Because they're frustrated over... Checks notes. An anti-child trafficking movie. Obviously without the AMC managers at these theatres even knowing about it. I mean, is that a fair assumption? Have you experienced any weirdness at a Sound of Freedom screening? Let me know in the comments below. And speaking of weirdness, the world continues to produce it in abundance. Given how unstable everything has seemingly become, the precarious state of the world is a constant concern. And that's why it's more important than ever to protect your assets. I first bought gold nearly 20 years ago when it was hovering at around $600 an ounce. It's now touching $2,000 an ounce. For me personally, it's been a reliable, trustworthy store of wealth for all of my adult life, which is why I'm more than keen to recommend it to you. And that brings me to today's video sponsor, Lear Capital. The cost of just about everything is through the roof. Gas, food, you name it. Big banks are gobbling up smaller banks. Is your cash even safe at this point? Then you've got the whole debanking scandal with people having their accounts cancelled for their political opinions. The US dollar's losing its purchasing power power and could be removed as the world reserve currency. That would be the end of the dollar as we know it. The stock market's a casino, so what are you going to do to protect you and your family's financial security? The good news is we can protect ourselves by holding tangible assets like gold and silver. Shiny. Ooh, nice. As I've experienced personally, they hold their value over time and can appreciate, providing a source of financial stability that can't just be printed away. Why wait? Do what I did and call my friends at Lear Capital. They're a wealth of 
knowledge and also taught me about including physical gold or silver into an IRA or 401k. Give them a call today to learn more at 800-411-2430 or go to leahpaul.com. There's a lot of gold companies to choose from, but I do business with Leah Capital because I trust them and you can too. With over 25 years of experience, thousands of five-star reviews and a 24-hour risk-free purchase guarantee, Leah Capital is my choice when buying gold and silver. Call 800-411-2430 or go to leahpaul.com to get your free gold and silver investor guide. And find out how you can get up to $15,000 in bonus metals with a qualified purchase. To learn more, call 800-411-2430 or go to leahpaul.com. Now back to the video. As is normally the case, these more nebulous, hard to prove claims only serve to distract from a far bigger and far more disturbing scandal. Why the legacy media and the establishment reacted to this movie with so much vitriol. What are they afraid of? Well, Sound of Freedom star Jim Caviezel provided part of the answer. During the five screenings, each screening, there was um, a talking going on. And I was like watching the audience going, what? The second time it happened, again, third time, talking in this one particular spot. And I'm thinking, what? Did we do something wrong or something? But so then one more time it happened at the end i was asking about the movie and i asked him about that one particular part where everybody's talking and they all cried out epstein island and i went oh okay now i understand what we're up against mm. wow epstein island isn't the only sex island out there and tim ballard takes down one of the films the most vehement legacy media denunciations of the movie come from let's say people with very interesting backgrounds. Prime amongst them, Noah Berlatsky, who slammed Sound of Freedom in an article published by Bloomberg, fuming at the film because it allows the quote, conspiratorial right, room to run wild. The same article was also published by the Washington Post. Fascinating how Berlatsky would get big mad at an anti-child trafficking movie. Given what some say is his documented history of trying to normalize pedophilia, Berlatsky infamously once tweeted that quote, Pedophiles are essentially a stigmatized group, are designated as deviants and that people hate them. Uh, yeah, and apparently that's a bad thing. Will someone think of the poor pedophiles? And as YouTuber Shoe on Head revealed, while Berlatsky went hard on Sound of Freedom, he was a big fan of a certain other controversial movie. Turns out he's the f***ing journalist who got mad at me like a year ago for criticizing the Netflix movie Cuties. Well, imagine my shock. In 2021, Belatsky was named the communications director at Prostasia, an organization that laments the stigmatization of pedophiles, referring to them as maps, minor attracted persons. I'm getting the word. Nuts. And offering its services under the umbrella of the MAP Support Club, otherwise known in some circles as Nonsaholics Anonymous. Nuts. In a hit piece against another anti-child trafficking film that offended him, 2012's Eden, Blatsky refers to underage trafficking victims as child sex workers, as if such a thing should even legitimately exist, claiming that most child trafficking victims are not coerced. On the theme of minors consenting to sex, Blatsky wrote, quote, the fact that adolescent brains are different than older people's brains doesn't mean that older people make better decisions. His essay was filed under sex positivity and age of consent. Blatsky's own personal life is also very intriguing. In an article he wrote for Yahoo, we learn that his wife is both non-binary and bisexual. Then, just by a stunning coincidence and completely independent of that fact, Blatsky's daughter came out as bisexual in middle school, before announcing she was a transgender lesbian in high school. Again, just a coincidence. Belatsky also thinks that parents are tyrants and that parents are an oppressive class like rich people or white people. Yeah, I think it's safe to say this guy's got a lot of issues and they're not of Time magazine. Questions are now being asked about why Bloomberg chose to commission Bolatsky to write an opinion piece about Sound of Freedom given his well dodgy background. When Bloomberg editorial board member Tracy Walsh was asked about the controversy, she locked down her account while claims that screenings of Sound of Freedom were ruined as some kind of deliberate organised sabotage don't really stack up. The organised hostility directed at the movie by the legacy media and the establishment certainly does stack up. 
And there's nothing more disturbing than that. Get early access to videos, exclusive live streams, and personally DM me. You've seen how much I get demonetized all the time. Well, this is how you support me. By subscribing at pauljosephwatson.locals.com. Please click the link in the description.